Hi Dixons, I'm Kate Henney, Trust Assistant Principal for Research and Development in English. I am at Dixons Brooklands today, our newest academy and first academy in Manchester. Thanks for watching this video. Please do subscribe to our channel, like, comment and share using the hashtag Dixons Open Source. At Dixons, we know reading is key to enabling our students to achieve. So as I mentioned in the last video, we are committed to using effective approaches to reading to ensure our students become expert readers. Last time we looked at teacher read aloud and today we will focus on control the game. This strategy enables teachers to strategically plan to read sections of a text themselves and to allocate students to read short segments of the text, enabling the teacher to model fluency and select parts of the text appropriate for the reading ages and needs of different students. For example, struggling readers can be given shorter segments of text to build their confidence gradually. It also allows teachers to hold all students to account, as any student could be selected at any time, so all must follow along as the text is being read. In the clip you're about to see, you will see a number of strategies that can make control the game effective. Firstly, keeping durations short and the reader unpredictable. By doing this, you can enable the student reading, the primary reader, to focus on really effective, expressive reading for a short burst, which helps maintain a high quality of reading. It also helps keep up a good pace, which keeps the energy of the lesson high. By keeping the reading unpredictable, it helps ensure all students are accountable as everyone needs to be following along in case they are chosen to read. By keeping the duration of the text you ask students to read unpredictable, you can also shorten or lengthen the amount you ask students to read if they are struggling or succeeding, which enables you to be responsive, as well as continuing to hold the rest of the class accountable, rather than having them switch off during the paragraph another pupil has been asked to read. Although the duration and reader will be unpredictable to students, this can be carefully planned by teachers, pre-planning who, including the teacher, will read each segment of the text based on your knowledge of students and their reading age data enables control the game to be used seamlessly and effectively. Reduce transaction costs. Establishing slick routines for asking students to read and stopping reading is essential for reducing time wasted and ensuring fluency of reading. Asking a student to read by just using their name or pick up Daniel and signalling for them to stop reading by just saying thanks Daniel are effective ways of doing this. Use bridging to model fluency. Select parts of the text that are more complex and model reading these aloud to maintain the flow of the text and model how to read fluently to students. Support decoding. Support decoding by minimising the transaction cost in making corrections and supporting students to correct errors themselves. For example, using punch the error by repeating a word a student misread back to them and putting emphasis on the part where the error occurred. For example, you said cat, try again, and the student says catch. Give brief but positive feedback when students decode words correctly themselves, such as great or perfect, as they continue reading, to acknowledge they got it correct, but to maintain the pace of the reading. Let's take a look at this in action. We are going to read this passage, and I want you to think about what the author is suggesting about poverty, and particularly the causes of poverty. I am going to read some of the text, and if I say your name, I want you to pick up the reading until I say thank you. We all need to be tracking the text in case we're asked to read. I'm going to start. Just want to see 100% of us with our finger or pen under the word four. Excellent. Four million British workers are now living in poverty, according to a report by the Joseph Rowntree Foundation, a figure that has risen by over half a million compared with five years ago. Since the government's introduction of universal credit, replacing six benefits with one single monthly payment, rough sleeping and demand at food banks have risen. Tyler. This is less of a turning point for poverty in the UK than a retail. 
Thanks, Tyler. Surveying British history since the 20th century from my recent book, Divided Kingdom, A History of Britain, 1900 to Present, my most shocking discovery was that the extent and causes of poverty were much the same now as in 1900. Ella. Charles Booth's massive survey of social conditions in the 20th century London found that about 30% of Londoners lived in poverty or want. Thank you, Ella. Let's pause for a second. Cold call coming. What was the author of this article's most shocking discovery? Hold that answer in your head. Lewis. Um, the most shocking discovery was not the extent of causing of poverty now, but the same as the um, 1900s. Perfect. Let's keep reading. We're tracking, we're at the word London. 100% of us are there. Imogen. London had a complex economy which attracted needy people and its conditions were perhaps exceptional. Thanks. Pick up Lewis. Sociological researcher Stephen Moultrie later surveyed po poverty in York, which he records a typical English town to map better signify conditions across the country. Kieran. He was horrified to discover that 28% of York's population were in obvious want and squalor. Other surveys in town and countryside before 1914 produced similar findings. Thanks. Pause for a second. Cold call coming. What does want and squalor refer to? Matthew. Uh, living poverty. Perfect. Thank you. Let's keep reading. We're at Booth and Roundtree. All of us tracking. I'll read this part. When used effectively, Control the Game allows teachers to take a data-driven approach to reading in the classroom, which combines teacher read aloud to model expressive reading and also supports decoding and holds students accountable. This reading system helps to develop the confidence and skills of struggling readers, while simultaneously engaging and supporting all students in becoming skilled readers. Look out for the next video in this mini-series where we will be looking at writing for reading. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. I look forward to seeing you soon.